All right, here we go. This is section 2.7, math 1, uh, factoring trinomials when A does not equal 1. Uh, these are the next step uh, in difficulty of factoring. Uh, we, what we did with homework, everything A equaled 1. If it didn't equal 1, uh, then you had a GCF and you pulled it out and it equaled 1. Okay? Uh, so these problems are the next step up when A doesn't equal 1. When we say A doesn't equal 1, we, we typically mean that A equals 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or you know, some number like that. It could be a fraction. It could be a negative number, but I'm not going to give you any of those. Okay, The trinomials that I'm going to give you uh, on the test, A is going to be a number bigger than 1 like, and an integer, like 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, something like that. The bigger the A is, uh, the harder the problem is. If A is prime, then it's a little easier. If A is a composite number, then it's a little harder. If A is 12, then that means the problem is that much harder because 12 has factors. Could be 12 and 1, could be 6 and 2, could be 4 and 3. If A is 2, what are the only two things that multiply in the world that give you 2x squared? 2x and x. 2x and x. Those are the only two things it can be. So when A is a prime number bigger than 1, it is a little easier. And those are what we're going to concentrate on today. So first step is GCF, 2, 11, and 5. Do we have a GCF? No, no we don't. So next step is your parentheses. Uh, we look at our signs. The sign rules are exactly the same. Okay. If this one's positive and this one's negative, then what do my two signs have to be? Both of them have to be negative, so we put that in there. Okay. How about filling in the first blanks? What are the only two things in the universe that multiply together to give me 2x squared? 2x, 2x and x. 2x and x, what we just got done saying. Then comes the hard part. We look at C and we factor out C. In this case, C is 5. I want to see you over here break down C. You don't really have to do both scenarios if it's the same factor. 5 and 1 and 1 and 5 is the same thing. But for this case, I'm going to do it because I'm going to show you what, how I'm going to do this. Step number six is look at B. What is B in this case? Negative 11. So we're trying to get to negative 11. We're going to use A, we're going to use C, and we're going to try to get to uh, negative 11. Remember that this value here, when I do the O and the I, the outside, this value here gets multiplied right there. So it's very important when I say two times one of these factors and I figure out which one I want it to be, that value has to go in that slot. Okay, so let's practice. What is 2 times 5? 10. 10 plus or minus 1, could I get to 11? Yes. Yes. 10 plus or minus 1 would be 11, so I could, I could get there. If I figured out that 2 needs to be multiplied by the 5, then where does the 5 need to go? In the second spot. We call that the second spot. First spot, second spot. So the 5 needs to go there. If the 5 goes there, then where's the only place the 1 can go? In the first slot. So I check it. My outside is negative 10x. My inside is negative x, which is negative 11x. I get B, so I factored it correctly. Okay, I checked it using the O and the I. Is the check step mandatory? Yes. Yes. Step number seven, check. Okay, you must check each and every problem. Questions? Anybody have any questions? Dean, you good? Okay, anybody have any questions about this problem? We're going to do lots of examples. Okay? All right. What if, I'm just going to get another example out of this problem. What if instead of directions and saying factor, what if it said solve? and it was equal to zero, and you factored at this point, what would your two answers be? What would it be here? One half, right? That opposite of that value divided by that value. What would the answer be here? Five. Positive five. Exactly right. One half, positive five. Any questions? Anybody not see how I got one half and five? Raise your hand. Just give me a little wave. Anybody, anybody, anybody? You got the half divided by one and the two. Opposite divided by. Opposite divided by. Yes? If there was, that's right. If there was just x by itself, the answer would be positive 1. 
Okay, good question. Anybody else? All right, let's do another example. I try to do that and give you another, you know, solve it. Go ahead and solve it out and get another example because it's there. It's right there in front of us. It's just another example for you to look at. All right. Let's try this one. 2x squared plus x minus 21. 2x squared plus x minus 21. First step. What's always your first step? Is there one? Yes. 2, 1, and 21. Is there a GCF? Uh, no, no GCF. So what's your next step? Parentheses. Parentheses here and here. I know that I've got 2x and x. Go ahead and fill in the first blanks. Right? No big deal. I know that 2x and x is the only thing that gives me 2x squared. What do your signs have to be in this case? They have to be different because this is negative. Then one has to be positive and one has to be negative. Doesn't matter for now. It will in a minute. But for right now, it doesn't matter. Now what do we do? Break down 21. What does 21 break down into? 7 and 3 and 21 and 1. Let's try 7 and 3. This is how we do it. Eyes up here. We say 2 times 7. What's 2 times 7? 14. 14 plus or minus 3. Is that going to give us 1 in the middle? No. No, it's not. All right, let's try that again. 2 times 3. What's 2 times 3? 6. 6 plus or minus 7. Could that give us 1 in the middle? Yes. Yes, it could. If I want the 2 to be multiplied by the 3 so that I'll get a 6, where does the 3 need to go? In the first slot or the second slot? It needs to go in the second slot. If 3 goes there, then what has to go here? 7 has to go here. Okay, now what do I need to do? I need to check it. The outside gives me negative 6x. The inside gives me positive 7x, which is positive x in the middle. Is that what I wanted? Yes, yes it is, so it checks. What if, hold on, let me finish and then you can ask. What if, let's say I did all this work and I got down here, instead of positive x, it said negative x. Right? What would be the only thing I would have to do? Flip the signs. Very good. This one happened to work out perfectly, so I didn't have to do anything. What method are we using? Guess and check. We're checking using FOIL, but this is the guess and check method of factor. We guessed that 3 and 7 were going to work. We checked it, so we know that it works. Question. Somebody, yes, Hester. Like, so when 8, the, it, like when 8 doesn't equal 1, that means that you have to, um, you have to have an order? Like when the plus and minus, you have to have an order? No. This one could have been minus, and that one could have been plus. All we know is that that one's negative, one's plus, and one's minus. Okay? Questions? Sure. Yeah, slightly. My bad. Ah. Let's try another example. Directions say fact. Factor, factor, factor. First step. GCF. GCF. 6, 26, and 20. Do they all have something in common? Yes. What is it? Four. A two. Four won't go into this one or this one. So I take a two out, and what's left? Quiet place. What's left? 3x squared minus 13x. Minus 10. Minus 10. You've got to be able to factor out a GCF. right? We did that earlier. I think it was like 2.5 or something like that. So we take the three, uh, 2 out. And it's just sitting out front. It just hangs out out front. Okay, you Just leave it out front. Is this problem easier when A is 3 rather than when A is 6? Yes. Yeah, it's a lot easier. Why is 3 easier than 6? 3 is prime. 3 is prime. 3 only has one choice. 3 and 1. And that's it. 6 could be 6 and 1, or it could be 2 and 3, or 3 and 2. So you have lots of choices when that number is composite. 
So we got two parentheses, parentheses, parentheses. We know 3x and x. We know plus and minus. Wait, we put the x out No. The two is just hanging out out front. We pulled it out to the front. It just hangs out out front. Good question. All right, did I, I went a little fast. Did I miss anybody? Okay, now what do we do? What's the next step? Factor out C. Factor out C. In this case, what is C? 10, not 20 anymore. All right, it's now 10. So I've got 10 and 1 and what? 5 and 2 or 2 and 5. What number are we trying to get to in the middle? 13. We've got a 3, and so we're going to have to figure it out. Let's try the first one. What is 3 times 10? 30. 30. 30. Plus or minus 1. Is that going to get us to 13? No. No, it's not. How about 3 times 1? Yes. 3 times 1 is what? 3 plus or minus 10. Could that get us to 13? Yes. All right. So let's try that. All right. We want the 3 to be multiplied by the 1. And we're going to put the 10 right there. 10 times 1 is 10. So we think we're okay. We're guessing that 3 and 10... I'm sorry, 10 and 1 are going to work. All right, what do we have to do now? Check. We have to check. The outside gives us negative 3x. The inside gives us positive 10x, which is positive 7x. Is that what I want in the middle? No. Well, what happened? Why didn't this work? We thought we had it. Yeah, check the other ones. The signs. Change. The signs didn't work. The only way this would give you 13, right? In this case, negative 13 was B if they were both negatives. And they're not both negatives. So even though we thought it might work, it had the potential to work, it doesn't work, right? So these factors, 10 and 1, don't work. We know that the other one's not going to work because it's going to give us 30. So if that one doesn't work, then we move on to the next one. That can happen, guys. These problems can take, you know, 2, 3, 4 minutes, sometimes even 5 minutes for you to guess and check all of the different scenarios. All right, now let's try it again. What is 3 times 2? 6. 6 plus or minus 5. No. Is that going to give us 13? No. no. How about 3 times 5? Yes. yes. 3 times 5 is? 15. 15. 15 plus or minus 2 could give us 13. If I want the 3 to be multiplied by the 5, then where does the 5 have to go? Second. It has to go right there in the second slot. If 5 goes here, eyes up here please, if 5 goes here, then what has to go here? Two. A 2. 2 times 5 will give you 10. You don't have a choice. Now, what do you have to do? Check. You have to check it. The outside gives you negative 15x. The inside gives you positive 2x, which is negative 13x. Is that what we want in the middle? Yes, yes it is. So it checks. All right, we're going to go one step further. We're going to solve this problem out. Let's say that the direction set solve. You're sitting there right here at this step. It's equal to zero. What happens to the two? What happens to the two on the front? No, that would be going backwards. We just made it big. You would be going, you would be doing the opposite. Anybody know what happens to the two? Divide by two. Divide both sides by two. And effectively, what happens? It just goes away. Watch. Everybody's eyes watch. You divide this side by two. You divide this side by 2, and these 2's cancel. Effectively, that 2 out there, because it doesn't have a variable on it, it just goes away. What is 0 over 2? It's just the same as 0. So basically, guys, the 2 just went away. Why? Because you divided it on both sides. Now that you've gotten rid of the 2, it's a piece of cake. What is x equal? How many answers are you going to get? You've got two x's, you're going to get two answers. So what does x equal here? Negative two thirds. What does x equal here? Five. Positive five. Negative two thirds and positive five. If I took negative two thirds and I plugged it right there and right there, it would equal zero. If I took positive five and I plugged it in there and there, it would equal zero. Okay, both of these answers, if it was set up equal to zero to begin with, and it said solve, both of these answers would work. Okay? What, what time are you at? 14 minutes, 43 seconds. Perfect.